Hello everyone and welcome to this MOOC dedicated to crude oil atmospheric distillation. The distillation is the starting process for crude oil refining operations. In fact, all of the refinery's crude oil goes through distillation. In these videos, we will discuss the important characteristics of different crudes for the distillation process. To do this, we will talk about the major elements that constitute crude oil as well as the minority elements that are important for the proper functioning of the process. Then we will see the process in details, the material balance, the heat balance, and the energy optimization of the process. Are you ready? So, let's go! The overall refining scheme can be represented with this general scheme. It can be seen from this diagram that the distillation is the starting point of refining. The distillation is a separation process that leads to the production of naphtha, kerosene, diesel, and a so-called residue cut. We will see that this process requires a lot of energy, and we will detail the means to optimize this energy consumption. It will also be seen that this process requires a desalting step to manage the corrosion generated by the species associated to the salts present in the crude. Before going into the details of the process, let's zoom in on different crudes and their characteristics. First of all, crude oil consists of two major elements. Carbon for about 80% by weight and hydrogen for about 13% by weight. The elements that we can find in the crude with a concentration level between 0.5 and 5% are sulfur and nitrogen. Finally, let's finish with the minority elements. There are metals. These metals will be present in the form of two major families. The metals associated with hydrocarbons, and here we mainly found nickel and vanadium, and to a lesser extent some iron, mercury, lead, etc and metals associated with chlorine salts. This is sodium, calcium, and magnesium. They are present in the form of NaCl, CaCl2, and MgCl2. The content of metals associated with hydrocarbons typically varies between 5 and 500 ppm. As for the metals associated with the salts, we prefer speaking in chlorine equivalent. This content, which includes the salts of sodium, magnesium, and calcium, varies between 20 and 350 ppm. The distribution between these salts is shown in the figure opposite. We see that the majority salt is NaCl for about 70 to 80% by weight. But is it a problem to have chlorine salts in the crude? In fact, above 40 ppm, these salts create problems of fouling in the prey train, and at high temperature, they can hydrolyze to form hydrochloric acid and ultimately create severe corrosion phenomena because of the acidity of hydrochloric acid. Before entering in the process itself, let's do an experiment together. If you take a small amount of oil and you heat it up, here is what will happen. We will start by vaporizing the lighter molecules, that is to say the C1, C2, and the C3, C4, also called LPG. Finally, at a temperature of about 30 degrees C, the naphtha will be vaporized up to 150 degrees C. Between 150 and 250 degrees C, we will vaporize the kerosene. Then, at a temperature between 250 and 300 degrees C, we will vaporize the light diesel cut. Then, between 300 and 350 degrees C, the heavy diesel cut. At about 380 degrees C, we must stop the experiment because of the temperature. In fact, the molecules start to crack and produce light molecules, C1 to C4, which is absolutely not the objective of the distillation process. At 380 degrees C, there remains in the bottom of the bottle a cut called atmospheric residue. If we transcribe in terms of carbon chains, we see that the naphtha concentrates the molecules having between 5 and 10 carbon atoms, the kerosene between 10 and 15, and finally the diesel, the molecules between 15 and 20 carbon atoms. 
the residue concentrates the molecules with a very high number of carbon atoms. This transition temperature of 150 degrees C between naphtha and kerosene is what is called a cut point. Indeed, if we take the specific example of this crude oil from North Sea and we cut at 150 degrees C with a knife, we will recover about 22% of naphtha on a weight basis. To do this, we just have to read on the distillation curve the quantity we covered at 150 degrees C. Let's do the same experiment with kerosene, and let's cut the crude at 250 degrees C. We see that we will recover about 41% in total, or 41 minus 22% of naphtha, let's say 19% of kerosene. Same exercise with the lad diesel, we will recover about 49%. At 49%, we must subtract the 41% of naphtha plus kerosene, that is to say, 7% of light diesel. Finally, for heavy diesel at 350 degrees C, there will remain 11%. The atmospheric residue represents 40% of the crude. Of course, this exercise is only valid for a given crude namely here, a crude oil from North Sea. If we had taken a different crude, we would have found different quantities. As you can see on the graph, crude oils, depending on their origin, naturally contain a very viable content of LPG, naphtha, kerosene, diesel, and residue. The LPG content, C3 and C4, varies between 0.2 and 3.5 weight percent of the crude with an average value of about 1.5 weight percent. The average naphtha content is about 15%, kerosene about 14%, diesel about 28%, and finally, residue represents about 42%. Let's now take the example of a refinery that would process 500 tons per hour of crude oil. We know that with the cut points we have just selected before, that we can produce 112 tons per hour of naphtha, 94 tons per hour of kerosene, 37 tons per hour of light diesel, 56 tons per hour of heavy diesel, and finally 200 tons per hour of atmospheric residue. But you may be wondering whether these cut points of 150, 250, 300 and 350 degrees C are always the same, whatever the crude oil and whatever the refinery objectives. Can we increase or decrease them to make more kerosene or less gasoline? We will answer all these questions in the next videos. If the separation process by distillation was perfect, we would obtain such a diagram each product having the distillation curve as shown here, corresponding to the cut point that we have selected just before. The purpose of atmospheric distillation is to separate the crude in different cuts on an industrial scale. We will use the difference in boiling temperature of the molecules present in the crude to do this. Well, that's it for the first video. I invite you to watch the second video dedicated to the industrial implementation of the process. Thanks a lot for your attention, see you very soon and feel free to test your knowledge on refiningisexciting.com and do the quiz. Thank you very much and see you very soon for the second part. Bye-bye.